Hello, everybody. Welcome to the PWO WrestleCast. Uh, not a live edition tonight, but uh, coming at you on a little bit of a tape delay. As always, I'm your host, Matt. With me tonight, of course, you know him, you love him. It's Ryan Alvarez. Yeah. Uh, hey, how's it going? <laughs> and, of course, yeah. the front man himself, D. White. Hey, man, anything happened to wrestling over the weekend? I was kind of out of it. I'm not sure. I was uh, just, you know, Nothing. a bunch of horrible stuff. Just a okay. bunch of horrible, horribleness. Yeah. Just like so just like last weekend. Okay, great. So um, I, I don't know if you caught it, Dwight. Uh, we actually had to put up an emergency news break video Friday night. Yeah. Uh, actually, I actually did. I, I watched it right after you did. So um, I was being facetious. 13. Oh, I know. Boy, uh, just a little tie in here. Because, you know, if you want our full opinions, that's the video to go to. Uh, yes. But for a quick update, if you missed that video, there were 13 releases from NXT on Friday night in the middle of SmackDown. Uh, and there's been some press releases about that since then. We told you guys we were going to give you an update. And there has been a lot. Um, a lot of stuff has come back and forth from that. So first up, uh, from the, the word of Dave Meltzer from uh, his latest Wrestling Observer, Paul Levesque and Shawn Michaels didn't have anything to do with the cuts. It was done by Vince McMahon, Bruce Pritchard, and John Laurinaitis. The basic gist is that NXT is going to change in some ways. They think a lot of the competitors are too small and too old. Uh, and some of those uh, details Meltzer added are that they want more Roman Reigns looking guys. The basic feeling is they lost the war and now it's time to get back to it is what it is. This is the aftermath. This is the new direction. And the new direction is younger guys and bigger guys. Uh, the direct word from uh, from Melser's source on, on these changes, no more midgets, no one starting in their 30s. They want people who can be box office attractions and main characters. Um, no, they don't. No, they don't. So this ties into a little while ago um, when, when, when Vince went to the Performance Center and he was like, this is, this is who we're going to call up. And that's specifically it. And you could have just told me that's who they were looking for. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Triple H had nothing to do with this. Um, right. He's been doing nothing but um, doing his best, honestly, to make NXT a great show, which I think out of the three brands, it's the most consistent on a week-to-week mm-hmm. basis as far as not just in-ring action, but I think storytelling. Um, I think the CWC kind of, hampers nxt a little bit i know they're going for more of like that um indie look which is kind of the next piece of news there matt um well i was gonna add i have a little bit more from dave Meltzer on there before you're good on all of his stuff as uh he continued there's been a divide in the company's higher-ups on how they view nxt as well as uh nxt as uh in the future what happened happened uh, in reference to the war with AEW. Now they want to get back to what it was. So there's cuts that were made, and these were the guys that were cut. There's going to be changes. You know, power plays a weird word. There's decisive opinions about wrestling among the key people, and they're fighting for Vince's ear. And this is the ear that Vince has this week. Next week, he may listen to someone else's ear and may go in a completely different direction, but that's what happened this week. Uh, I think the big All thing... Right, I'm- well, can I follow up with Ryan? Because when I, when they said they they basically announced that Vince was going to the promote performance center, right? Mm-hmm. That was the announce that was the announcement. No, we yeah. all were we all were guessing why or what was going to happen, right? So we were thinking who he's gonna bring up. Mm-hmm. I, I'm I believe he went down there to see who who he's gonna get rid of. I mean, basically they decided then we're scrapping this. And you know, and and you know, this whole getting back to what it was with who, you know, I mean, you've got some guys. If I if I'm if we're honest, some you know some of sort of the top guys or who you got got down there. Like I mean, I'm thinking of people like Cameron Grimes and um, oh, La great. Knight. Yeah, and and it's like you, it's like who who are you talking about? You know, Karrion Cross. You bring you got to bring him up, um, but it's like there's you you basically are starting from scratch almost and they let a lot of developmental guys they let a lot of guys go who met the criteria they were saying was the criteria 
but um, I, you know, I don't know. I, I'm not going to, I don't want to get, we can go on to, with this forever. Um, definitely. I think um, the guys that they brought in from evolve sort of all got just tossed to the garbage. I mean, is, are any of those, are, are any of them left? Um, I don't think so. If I'm being honest with you, Leon Ruff and Anthony Henry were the two that I really stuck with. Right. Jake I mean, Atlas, Jake Atlas. Um, come on. Yeah, and so, yeah, I think that Evolve thing, which was kind of cool, and they really sort of pushed, because Gargano had been there, and, so, and, and but, yeah, those guys, that that was that was sort of questionable what happened. They were going to buy Evolve. That obviously didn't work out. And so, um, yeah, that's that was that's tough. But uh, anyway, let's let's keep going. I just I when when we heard about Vince going down there, I think we were figuring out okay, who's he going to bring up and all that stuff. And it seems mm-hmm. to me like he went down. He went down there to figure out where to start the fire. You know, to burn it to the ground. Well, it, it's so confusing because you had Bronson Reed, who was just cut, but he was just up there for main roster tryouts. He was someone who, right. who was heavily expected to be making his main roster debut any moment. So they even well, hinted had, at it on television in NXT. And did, hadn't he been on main event? A couple. Yeah, one main event, event match, match, and then he yeah. had one dark, dark match. Right. Um, well, and and also when they say that Vince McMahon, Bruce Pritchard, and John John Laurinaitis, we all know Bruce Pritchard and John Laurinaitis are the yes men of yes men. They're not ever going to contradict Vince McMahon. They're gonna shake. They're gonna say yes, Mr. McMahon. Yes, Mr. McMahon. And that's what we're gonna. That's what they're gonna be. So it's a Vince McMahon thing. What he needs, and if you saw, was another report um, that uh, I think came from Sean Ross Sapp that. Um, you know, that, that was one of the reasons Paul Heyman was sort of pushed out because he was the only one who would push back mm-hmm. on this, on this yeah. idiotic ideas. It was like, no, that's mm. stupid. It was Meltzer. Oh, okay. yeah. Well, and, and, and look where it got him. You know, they were basically like, um, oh, well, you could be on TV, but we don't want your ideas anymore. Now, of course, as always with, with Dave Meltzer, take it with a grain of salt. It could not necessarily be 100% true. You know, I just find that he's more right than he's wrong, if I'm being honest here. Um, he did say uh, <laughs> Heyman was the only one who challenged him on booking decisions, but he also said that Vince McMahon's currently surrounded by people telling him that AEW sucks, CM Punk's an asshole, and that he'll ruin their company. Now, that might be the case, but right now it looks like they're selling out stadiums with the rumor of CM right. Punk. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, other things to go out here. Bronson Reed put out a video recently also on Twitter. Um, thanking Shawn Michaels and Triple H and the wonderful coaches and crew down in NXT. He didn't mention anyone on the main roster. He didn't mention Vince, which is uh, pretty interesting. Typically, most people always kind of go to that one. Um, it's, it was interesting to me. He did not. Uh, additionally, Anthony uh, Anthony Henry, you might know him as Ash, Asher Hale, was what he was going by. Uh, he said uh, that there's nothing he could have done to make things turn out any different. There's a shift happening within the company and he no longer fits what they are looking for. Um, Doesn't it sound like it now? I know it's sports entertainment. It's not professional wrestling, uh, but doesn't this seem like, and I, I know we mentioned it in our releases video we put out on Friday night. Um, this screams somebody buy me like this screams I'm ready to make a sale and it's not and it's not a monetary deal at this point it's not a financial issue it's who do we think is marketable enough to get to to make more money and while they're dead dead wrong it seems like they want more Roman Reigns guys so they can make their uh, you know, straight to Peacock, you know, movies and, you know, it, it, it's, and there's, and there's nothing wrong with, with making your money, but, you know, and I think we were talking in our group chat over the weekend and Jeff said it best. It's like when, when you scoop up talent just to get, just so you don't go to the other place, like, yeah, that's a two way street, but at the same time, you know you're going to do nothing for for them career wise. That makes you way worse. 
what are, what are we in the business for then you know here's here's my whole thing with all of this and and from from a viewer standpoint this is frustrating um <clears throat> it's you could have been doing something with these guys mm-hmm uh, we, we have said for a very long time that the roster is bloated, but it would be less bloated if, A, we didn't have the same match every week on TV mm. uh, that's geared towards your main roster matches, Raw and SmackDown. Um, and if you just cycled what you were doing, if you weren't pushing out the formulaic, we need to have this every show, we don't need these people on every week. We don't need... Uh, four segments with Bianca Belair or Zelina Vega on TV on SmackDown. That just happened. Right. Well, how about this? I don't know. Maybe I don't start every show with a 22 minute promo. Yes. One guy who takes up the first, basically all the way to the first uh, commercial break. That's a half an hour. Of the show is John Cena or Roman Reigns or Drew Mack, whoever. It's always one guy Stop in the ring. on Friday. Yeah, mm-hmm. talking. And it's like... It took up 15 minutes for, for a storyline we didn't really need additional setup for. It was already there. We had it. Well, why do why, why take 15 minutes to accomplish what you can do in eight minutes, and now we have time for two other people to have a match or a tag team match or something like that to get some more people on TV, to bring more eyes and get me more, more people interested. Here's another thing I'm going to throw out while we talk about this. About the the about it being bloated. Here's a deal. It was bloated, but if you're a soccer fan, anyone but me, no. What you just saw, one of the biggest things ever in the history of world soccer today or football, was was Messi leaving Barcelona. Mm-hmm. Now Messi left. Messi signed with Barcelona. He was like eight years old. Okay, and he, and he's the greatest soccer player in the world. He's made. He's pr- worth a billion dollars. I'm sure to. to you know, and all this, but the, here's the deal. Do you know why they, why they had to get rid of him? Because they had been operating. They on a, basically they were, uh, their salaries took up every penny of the income that this, and that's what, that's the biggest soccer team in the world for eight years. They were running on 125% of their budget. So they were running at a loss basic from salaries, from signing too many people, paying those people too much money so that when his contract was up, they couldn't afford to sign the signature guy, okay, because of all of the other bad deals they had made. Now, if we watch, we've watched, you know, Pete Dunn, we've watched Adam Cole, which we're going to talk about. We've watched Alistair Black. We've watched these contracts that somehow got screwed up in the office, right? And so there's a whole lot of that going on. Maybe Nick Khan is not the bad guy. Maybe he's actually the guy that's coming in going, what is this mess? We need to clean it up. Or, or it's just like we were saying, it's, 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 they signed all those people thinking AEW was going to be a flash in the pan and we were just going to wait them out and we were going to beat them before they ever got on the field and they didn't. Okay. Either way, I, I, I don't know, but I'm, I'm just saying that it's not good no matter how they spin it, this is a huge, huge loss for WWE at every level. Well, here's here's where this continues, honestly. And, and also, I need to take a minute here because I put a lot of blame on Nick Khan uh, on our video la- uh, on Friday. Um, and honestly, it, it doesn't seem like it's him. From all reports, oh, like yeah. Vince is doing Vince stuff. Or, or, or he's looking and saying, okay, guys, this is awesome. We cannot afford to pay all these people this money. We can't. We can't have Braun Strowman making a million dollars a year. We can't have um, Bray Wyatt making a million and a half a year, whatever they were, and pay, uh, what is it? I was saying that they, oh, since the first round of releases, remember last year we had the big black release? They've released like 100 and, 125 people i mean how did you how did you have 125 people to begin with you know what i mean it was over 100 since april 2020 and only 18 percent out of those 100 cuts are currently uh having a full contract with someone mind you two of them went back to wwe in zelina Vega and samoa joe right and 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 so it's like maybe it was just bloated maybe that's what they're doing i don't know it's it's, it's crazy and see we talk about bloated um 
a report came out a few weeks ago about the percentage of matches that are rematches, um, <laughs> a match that we've seen the year. Um, give you a guess as to which was the highest per, per, uh, percentage. It was Raw. That would be your Monday Night Raw. Uh, yeah. for, well, and this is just the first part of the year, so this isn't anything past the second quarter this year. Uh, but at the time, 40%. So, I mean, um, SmackDown was 39%, <laughs> NXT 19%, Impact 17 AEW Dynamite 5%. That's, that's, I'm going to do, you know what I'm going to do? It matters. It matters. It I'm does. sorry. It really it does. does. It really does. Do hardcore wrestling fans, it matters. I don't know to casuals. I don't know. I no, would no, imagine no. they just like the one person they're there to see. No, No, I'm telling you. That for the casuals are starting to notice. I know because I've talked to some folks, not that you know that are wrestling fans, but who's like spouse or whatever is is sort of casually into like mine. My wife, <coughs> they notice. They're like, wait a minute, didn't that didn't these two same guys just wrestle last night? They're like, yes, honey, they did. Well, why are they wrestling again? Yeah, I don't know. You know that kind. Of, I mean, the, honestly, they, when the when the person who's really not paying attention notices. <laughs> That's not good. That's not good at all. And I've, I have said this before on this show and on other shows. There are ways to put new talent and build a storyline without it being a one-on-one -on -one match every week or a tag team match every week or a 20-minute long promo every week. Mm -hmm. I'm such a big fan of the this person versus jobber on their way down the ring, you have the video vignette that you serve in a minute. Mm -hmm. And then they crush someone in two minutes and we move on. Because you would get yes. so much more a production out of that. You're going to not get, uh, you're not, you're not going to burn out fans. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we just did this on AEW with um, God, the Varsity Blondes and Julia Hart yeah. have had one. I'm trying to think if the if their opponent did as well. Um, I don't think I don't think so. But like you are getting over someone who is not you know they're building they're building her Julia Hart to be a bigger deal, which is great because you need to do that. And she's mm -hmm. not taking up a major part of the show. And honestly, she still lost that match. I think it was to Thunder mm -hmm. Rosa. I think she lost to Thunder. It Rosa. was correct. So mm -hmm. you you've built Thunder Rosa. And you've added more character depth to Julia Hart. You, right. you did all of this in five minutes. Right. Imagine what you course, could do with a roster with Monday Night Raw if you just do the same formula. You could have been pumping out like like Mickey Ash. We have joked on this yeah. thing forever. But if you had vignettes like this week after week after week, and it wasn't just suddenly, I'm a superhero. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. I may not like it, but it's not just an immediate, like, abrupt turn. Mm -hmm. Right. You well, know? and also, you know, there's also, like, you can build up, especially with her, because I was thinking about how they kind of did this with the hurricane back in the day, just, just because it popped in my head. But, like, you could have them, like, just, you know, these had, like, a series of sort of unlikely victories, you know? And, and, and that mm -hmm. way, you, you don't lose with whoever they're against. They're like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe she keeps getting lucky or if she keeps, you know, whatever. And then it leads all the way to the title or leads all the way to the money in the bank. I mean, those things make sense. Instead, and we've heard this before um, over and over again, they figure it out when they the day they get there. And that's that's not that's not that's never the way of doing it. But it's a trust issue, and, and that's not ever going to go. Because we see, I mean, look at the whole Hangman, at Hangman, Kenny Omega thing. How long has that gone on? And guess what? I'm still interested in it. Yeah. And they still haven't, and they haven't yeah. given us, the, they haven't given us the payoff. We don't, haven't gotten the payoff yet. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. And so, um, this is where I give credit to NXT, and I'll give credit what credit's due. Um, the way they've built care characters and story through the breakout tournament um yeah what they're doing with that yeah. with a in within a two-hour show it doesn't feel like it's unnecessary it doesn't feel like it's being crunched in there and the show is rushing like it's being well thought out and you got these guys like 
Odyssey Jones, who one day you will see on the main roster because yeah. he's within – he's – I mean, it, it, it's, it's fact. Even we though, said the same thing about Bronson Reed, though. At, at this you're point, right. I, don't, I don't know. I don't think uh, anyone's you, safe. You're right. Not Although, Odyssey safe. Jones almost dropped that guy right on his neck in his, in his first round match. Almost mm-hmm. killed him. Um, but it's, right. but it's, Carmen. but it's the, it's the, you know, 90 seconds to two minute little like vignette, you know, oh, and their match is going to be a little later in the night. That's great. They do the same thing like yeah. af- after the next match or the match or the next segment. Oh, you know, the match is right. coming up next. It's fresh in your mind. You're going to care more about the match and you're going to be more invested. It's there. Yeah. Like Matt, like, like Matt said, the formula is there. I'm certain at this point, Vince, Vince, Vince McMahon is insane because it's yeah. plain insanity to keep oh. doing the same thing over and over and, to, and well, to not expect a different result because he thinks what he's doing is fine. And it, it's, it's going to be what it's going to be because it hasn't changed in friggin' 30 years. So here's also where I think. <laughs> Uh, look, and, and I know this gets a lot of crap. I don't know everyone, everyone's a big fan of this. You have a YouTube channel with arguably the most subscribers out of any other sports-based thing. Yeah. All right? Take advantage of that. Put vignettes out on there. H- have characters cut promos and then put them on there. Like, uh, uh, we get the bump and, and things like that, but even that is is – more discussion based about things happening in WWE, but it's, it's not really promoting or pushing any storylines. Mm-hmm. You know, it, we could do so much more with what we have. I'm not saying suddenly put together WWE Dark or WWE Dark Elevation, you know, mm-hmm. but you, yeah. you can promote storyline work. I, I, I mean, the Road to series for AEW has been one of my favorite things Fantastic. that any company has ever done because it makes me care. Yep. You know, um, it 15 minutes, 15 minutes is all it takes for, for a 15 not, minute clip on YouTube. Not, not even that either. Think about it. And f- 15 minutes is great, but we just watch the Olympics and you know, you'll get two minutes right before an event and they give you the human interest story or whatever. If you remember guys, we watched their ROH pure tournament. They did that with some of the guys that came in like Tony Deppen and, um, and Fred Stop. Yehi, they gave just a little introduce these guys you know things like that it was done super well so by the time we watched the match even though they lost in most of the cases the guys you didn't know you were like oh i want to see that guy again because now it's i'm interested in that guy right wwe is there is no excuse just think about this though nxt has done so well with making stories over the years that they immediately destroy when they get to the main roster. Think about Gargano and Champa. They have a two-year-long blood feud, friends, enemies, back and forth, back and forth. They, it, they end up, we're never going to wrestle again. We're going to kill each other. They put them on TV, and they're a freaking tag team. It's a tag I mean, team, match player. I'm like, what the hell? It's like you, it's, 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 it's Matt, you're right. They could do so much. Here's the first thing. How about some stuff you just don't do? How about let's just not do stupid stuff, okay? If you've got something handed to you that's gold, it's it's funny because I who is it that I put on? Uh, I was uh, I was talking to. Oh gosh, I want to give somebody credit. It was Sean Ross Sapp. It was definitely Sean Ross Sapp when they were t- he on his on the show about when they released Bray Wyatt. And they was talking about someone had given a, a comment about making lemons out of lemonade out of lemons. And he said, no, no, no. It's like being handed a glass of delicious lemonade, turning it back into lemons and then smashing it with a hammer. So it's like, just take the lemonade, man. Stop messing with it. Yeah. So obviously this has us as fans rattled and frustrated. But not just that, though. This is also something that has been reached out to uh, broadcast partners, such as I'm confused what that's about. Um, uh, you, we have USA, USA from, Network <laughs> from the USA Network. Um, yeah. Sorry, no. There was a tweet that just went out that makes me question some things that might be happening on Monday Night Raw. Um, 
This is from Andrew Zarian. He's from the Matt Men podcast. Uh, it's typically tied in with uh, Wrestling Observer, but they do a lot of other stuff. These guys have also been known to do a lot of solid uh, investigative work. Um, so Andrew Zarian says he's hearing a lot of chat from USA Network about higher ranked representatives regarding the release from NXT. Uh, personally, they're disappointed with how this is going. The perception from many is that these upcoming changes will be negative. Perception means everything, especially when you're working with partners who are not pro wrestling fans and don't have deep knowledge of the talent. In reality, are the changes coming to NXT a bad thing? Time will tell. Which is which is very true. I mean, look, we were sitting here and we were all very frustrated with this. For all we know, NXT could improve. It could be a better show. Time will tell. We may be completely and utterly wrong on this, but I, I really hate being this guy. No, no. Percentages are pretty much in our favor on this at this point. Well, yeah, it's, and if you think about it, Matt, if you think about like Ring of Honor when all those guys left for AEW, right? I mean, they lost a ton, okay? And 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 it took a while to dig out of that hole, and they've done well, and I've really enjoyed the product. And things like here's the thing, that wasn't so. I mean, it was a little bit self inflicted because of all that. I won't get into that, but. It wasn't their idea to let all those guys go. You know what yeah. I mean? They didn't fire those guys. And so it was like, this is self-inflicted stuff. So it was like, at some point, you got to wonder. It's like, well, how can we believe that you can improve something going forward when you've so thoroughly destroyed it when it, <laughs> when it was going okay? So I don't know. Matt, I think Let's I see. just saw the tweet that you saw. The Sean Ross Sapp one? Uh, no. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. uh, mine is Aaliyah going over Dakota Kai on main event. Oh. That, oh that, I didn't see that. I mean. I didn't, I didn't see that on main event. Um, that well, that must be surprising th at all. <laughs> that, well, that's a taping for – that's for next week's main event. That's awesome. That's a spoiler. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry about the spoiler. Care. I don't even care. <laughs> so, um, Sean Rossap just said, what is the point even of a brand split? Oh, now yeah. I'm sitting here wondering what, what just happened that I am not aware of. Well, well think about this, too. I don't know if you saw, but um, somebody had reported there's only five people listed on the web wwe website and for 205 live they have five people <laughs> total and, and here's the thing do you know who those five are well so let's I, see no i got you i got you so it's nigel okay. mcginnis who was brought in as right. a commentator who a is commentator. working in nxt uk all right yeah. santos escobar who is santos in nxt right the brian kendrick who retired like six to nine months ago Right. Mark Andrews, who did NXT UK, and Ika Minjiro. Who's, who who's, was on the break, breakout tournament. Who's in the breakout tournament right now. Right. That's currently a roster. None of them are, are exclusive to 205 Live to begin with, and only uh, one of them is regularly on the show for 205 Live, and that's Ika Minjiro. He's, he's pretty regularly on the show. Everyone else, <laughs> no, they're not there. Guys, <laughs> they missed. in the country. They missed the ball with uh, with 205 Live. When they were doing the raw underground non nonsense, that's what they should have been doing. They should use that hour for that. But instead, we get, you know, Commander Z's rolling through guys for a month and a half, and then we never see what uh, happened. He was done back then. I know. Oh, I, I, know. I, Sorry, I forgot. Avocado. <laughs> Sorry, no Yab little, no little, Yabba Dabba Kato. no little people. <laughs> yeah, not, 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 no little people. I forgot. No little people. I didn't use the word. I didn't use the word they use. Hey, man, look, uh, look. I just want to emphasize also that was directly a quote. That's not my word. So it's funny how how many guys you see that are that kind of stature on the main roster, and you're like, well, they must be doing some some something right. And for as much as um, I give Dominic Mysterio hell because. Mm -hmm. um ray mysterio uh, right i mean we're, we're we're gonna cut guys from nxt that are 
it, that are in that that aren't in the bracket that Vince McMahon is looking for. But then you turn around and you're like, well, Rey Mysterio is five six, one sixty five. Uh, grant, granted, you know the height of his whole thing was was you know after the death of Eddie Guerrero, uh, but uh, he's well over forty. Not to mention all of the part timers we bring back. So it's kind of contradictory to say that hey, we're going to cut you because you're old or small, and then you look at the main roster. Well, you look, you're like small, small, old, 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 old old and then and then we wonder why you know there's been no new news report that adam cole is resigned or any news news report that pete dunn is resigned well you know? that's a great segue there ryan <laughs> so uh, <laughs> uh hours before all these releases happened on friday uh adam cole apparently had a very special high level importance meeting with vince mcmahon uh, meeting was essentially held uh, to persuade Cole to stay with WWE. Rumored, now now this has been inconsistent across so many people, but the rumored amount is a million dollars per year to stay with the company, as well as uh, they have been told um, that, main, that uh, McMahon has asked writers to start making main roster storylines for Adam Cole. Now this is, uh, a lot of people consider that being that he's staying. Um, Please don't play. We have a, a tweet from uh, <laughs> the machine gun Carl Anderson talking about the Adam Cole offered $1 million. Uh, and he says, Luke Gallows asked for a no cut clause. And he said, and Carl Anderson said, shit, we don't need it. One more for the big guy. <laughs> <laughs> Like that—that's exactly no, that's too thing. comical. You can sign a million-dollar contract. That doesn't mean you're not going to be cut in six to nine months, a la Tyler Rust, Jake Atlas. Um, I <laughs> as he is going through this, I Adam, all right, Adam Cole. I I don't know if you're watching or not, or if you're listening, but remember the feeling you had when you were live streaming. And you found out that Tyler Breeze got released. Okay. Imagine, you know, and this is to be selfish, but imagine what, you know, what all of your fans and all of the people that care about where, where you go, what they're, they're going to feel the same thing you felt if you resign. Because I don't know if there is any main roster storyline that will that will be a long-term thing because right. look at who your two champions are now. Okay. You've got Roman Reigns questionable, whether he'll go over Cena or not. He um, Bobby Lash questionable. So uh, I, I know. And then we have Bobby Lashley versus Goldberg on the other side. Questionable. Who's going to come out of that one. So it, it Vince still relies on part timers. I don't understand why, you know, Know, we're sitting here waiting now I, I know there's a song and dance that's you know moxley did it for you know four five six months as they were throwing contract offers at him and he said no i'm gonna let it expire and then you see what happened you saw what happened to his on-screen character you know so i get why you know none of these guys are showing their hand yet um but you just have to think like you're still like probably top 10 best best in-ring guys in the world right now you know there's some stiff competition you may push them to the top 15 but we're talking about the world okay the man just had a five and a half star match last year so the fact that we're trying to pay a former multiple time nxt champion former you know um north american chain champion a million dollars a year when you know through just merch alone that's exactly what roman reign reigns is making i would spit on it and just throw it on the ground because it's not worth it i'm gonna agree with you and can you imagine how many undisputed era shirts how many bay bay shirts were sold i mean adam Mm -hmm. cole was probably the king of that here's the deal though um i don't know if you watched the Shawn michaels uh a and e bio that bio that they had <laughs> the, the biography 
which is really good. Actually, I enjoyed it. But Adam Cole was on there. And, you know, I wouldn't be. And I'm gonna, let, me, let me let you. I don't have a source for this. I don't have a source because I'm just going to speculate. But I'm going to bet you that of all the people um, that when Vince went down there, that they talked about cutting Adam Cole or and, and letting him loose. And Triple H and Shawn Michaels, if they went to bat for anybody, he's the one that they went to bat for. And I guarantee you that that's where that's coming from. Here's the deal. That, that conversation goes really well. It goes, okay, Vince, um, I know you think he's small and you don't want small guys and he's not, you know, he's not 22. I get that. Uh, but Vince, he brings in a ton of money for us already here at, at NXT. Also, do you really want him showing up with his girlfriend, who's the AEW women's champion, and rubbing this in on you because that's what will happen. Not only will they, will you have lost this war, but he will be the, he will be the centerpiece for that war that you lost. Um, take it. I just made all that up. I just made all that up. I'm just, I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm saying that's what could have happened. No, this is an off topic. Take it for what you will. Bray Wyatt, nine minutes ago, just tweeted out an image saying you can't kill it. Um, some speculating that he's going to be on Raw tonight. We'll see. What? What? You, you know his, uh, hey, you know his release. Okay. His, uh, not, his 90 days is up on Halloween, right? Oh, hey. <laughs> and immediately something else. Fightful has reached out with sources connected to Bray Wyatt and confirming that his absence following WrestleMania had nothing to do with what were called falsely reported mental health issues. Also, Bray Wyatt is 100% healthy and able to wrestle. During Wyatt's absence from TV, Fightful learned that he was working on adding creative elements to his character, which was slated to return on tonight's Raw in Orlando prior to the release. In addition to that, he had family engagements already scheduled for May and June. So stuff was supposed to happen tonight. Um prior to the release not sure if they're still happening tonight that will be something to keep an eye on so it I just seems it seems like uh his his uh social media post was going to be probably what his creation was or what he had come up with during his time off or a loose variation of it to avoid getting in trouble with wwe um yeah. if, if 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 he shows up on wwe he has a job good for him um, I'm not gonna be happy about it because uh, I will be because I like Bray Wyatt. I like <sighs> watching Bray Wyatt. Mm, yeah, I think that's <sighs> in the fool me once, fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice, three times, four times. <laughs> no. Yeah, you're Vince McMahon and you fool fool me once. It's already one once too many. Yeah, I mean. I don't know, man. Don't remember know. when? Hey, about all just this. Re re remember, remember at WrestleMania when Kane beat Eric Rowan in like eight seconds or whatever. Remember that? <laughs> oh, that was Kane, and he beat Chavo for the damn ECW no, no, title. No, that happened. That was Who eight was seconds. The Rock, the Rock beat Rowan the Rock beat Eric three Rowan. Three seconds. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. I was like, yeah, I got those two confused. But yeah, the Rock beat him, and so that was like, we're like what like this is the hottest thing going and you kill it with the rock oh wait you killed the fiend with goldberg oh we see that happening it's like well yeah uh -uh. and randy orton did light him on fire that all and, and yeah, so, yeah so whatever all right i i i love bray wyatt he's a he's a brilliant guy i'm glad to hear a lot of people are speculating about that and that was the sort of wwe marks defense thing they were like well he's had mental health issues and whatever like that was the, that was the wwe mark thing that they put the blame on on him um which was you know i i just I was like dude to speculate on that is just gross i'm sorry it's, it's just gross that you, that you're spec that you're speculating on that you know take it for what it is we mm -hmm. can talk about that and say we don't know about these other things well now we know now it's even worse. It's just as bad as we all thought it was. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's so It's depressing, isn't it? Well, let's also quickly, before Raw starts here, 
Uh, there are several NXT superstars backstage for Raw. That list includes Zia Lee, Aaliyah, Odyssey Jones, Dakota Kai, and Austin Theory. Obviously, we know about some main events. Uh, this is widely regarded by many people as Triple H sending out lifeboats, um, trying yeah. to get people paid prior to the changes happening. Um, additionally, yeah. uh, if you're carrying cross, you need to be, uh, be a little concerned because Jeff Hardy's supposed to be on the show. Oh God. What you gonna do? <laughs> no more um, words. Yeah, I, that's what undefeated I was NXT Karen, champion. <laughs> Karrion Cross says no more words. Yeah, because he got held oh. up and pinned. Uh, they were gonna put him on we... a losing streak. Um, Randy Orton also set to return. Apparently, he's opening the show here right now. Oh, damn it. Riddick Moss is backstage. He's uh, set to be back as well, returning from a torn ACL. Good for Riddick Moss. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good for good 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 for Riddick Moss. You know, glad that we get to watch him chase the twenty four seven title while guys are getting re- released. You're assuming you know? he's gonna be in the twenty four seven title. Dog, that's your next uh, mid level champion. No. Yeah. <sighs> no. Um. No. Yeah. Can you guys even tell me who uh who the U.S. champion is currently? It's a shame to fair lost to her. I did it really poorly because I don't want to get stricken with a copyright, but he did lose to Damian Priest like two weeks ago, I think. And last week, after Damian Priest already beat John Morrison that <sighs> night. So, you know what? I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm over it. Can we talk about some something good? Well, well, well let me well, let me we just, gotta get I, that. We gotta gonna, come up. There's levels to this. I want to pop. I want to pop something in here that we've watched that you may have talked about last week about how WWE does something stupid, but somebody else does it better. Um, Josh Alexander on Impact. Did you see that when they did the whole? Well, how about if you beat me in a match next week, then you get a tight, then you get a title shot. That one conversation saves that whole stupid way of booking something where if you beat the champion, then you get the yep. title match. All he had to have is one conversation. He's like, well, how do you think you just get a title match? You come up and ask for one. You know, that, that was, you know, that, that was the perfect way of doing that. I and got it's, one better here. It's never been here. I was like, as many times as they do that on WWE, no one's ever done that. No one's ever had that conversation. I got one for you here. It's, it's a crazy one. All right. You ready for it? Yeah. Why don't we just do the New Japan thing of the champ gets pinned in a big old tag match and all of a sudden, hey, right. I got you. It Thank wasn't you. one-on-one, so there's believable doubt, but you know. Yes, yes. No, <laughs> it's the dumbest concept that the champion loses two straight weeks in a row and then it's like, oh, well, um, well, we're, we're going to have a third match in like two shows from now. So that you forget that I just lost in back-to-back weeks, and then when right. you have the match at SummerSlam in in another two week, two weeks, you forget that all of this happened until they show you a video package of it five seconds before the before whoever walks out of the back. It's right. awful, but Dwight is absolutely right. All you have to do, even even if it even if it's Adam Pierce who's saying, "Hey, you win this match." And you're and you're gonna get a title shot next next week. And you know what? Right. Even everything's that's, good. That's cool. But you know what? I don't want you to do SmackDown. That just happened. Don't yeah. put up that you're gonna have Zelina Vega versus Bianca Belair in a title match. Then go back and say it's a contenders match. He has to win the match to get the title match. Have a mm-hmm. segment where Zelina Vega's like, "What's up?" She answered the challenge. She said it's a title match. And then be like, well, you haven't won anything, so we want you to at least try and win this one first. Yeah, right. There, <laughs> so instead of three segments, right. it could have just done one. Right. So, so on Thursday night, we watched on Impact how you do that with one 30-second conversation versus three segments of TV to accomplish the same thing worse Right, I, I, that's that's WWE. They drive me nuts with this nonsense. Here, I'm changing subjects. Hard turn. Okay, good. But we are talking about how the world is ending. 
Okay. The world is ending because I'm doing something I don't ever do. Oh, shoot. Good job, John Cena. Oh, yeah. Who would have thought this? John Cena was originally only given a couple of dates for his return uh, for his matchup to SummerSlam and asked for more, A, so that he could uh, do more, uh, get back in the ring, uh, at least uh, shake off the ring rust, as well as, you know, help the brand get back to where it needs to be. So oh. I'm very happy that we have a part-timer who's actually doing like matches pretty regularly and doing like You're next. dark main events or like, you know, house shows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, Good on you, John Cena. Being the one part-timer I don't hate this week. Well, and I was, I thought you were going to throw it. I would also like to compliment John Cena. Can we do it to him mm. twice in a row? I, w- I would like to What's compliment to us. Who are I we? Know, I, w- I don't know, but I would like to compliment John Cena because I watched the new Suicide Squad movie on Friday and John Cena and Idris Elba back and forth made me laugh out loud several times during that movie. That was, they were like, it was like Tr- John Travolta and Samuel L. Jackson from Pulp Fiction for a while. I mean, obviously not to that level, but yeah, it was like, this is actually enjoyable and John Cena is making me laugh. And I don't think it's just because it's John Cena. I think he legit was funny. So uh, let me just throw that out there. Way to go, John Cena. I'm going to have to watch now. I've heard, I've heard mixed reviews on Cena's acting. So I'm going to have to watch. And I will give you my opinion on that on the SmackDown review coming later this week. We haven't announced those yet. I know. We probably should eventually. There's, there's a little, uh, little light, light teaser there. Um, a yeah. few things left on the docket uh, announced today on Sammy Guevara's vlog Cody Rhodes announced that we have four new AEW stars that have been officially added to the Nightmare family they are Fuego Del Sol, Red Velvet Killian King and Baron Black um, most people thought Red Velvet was already in the group but it was never official so and now it's official so I guess um, it doesn't matter whether you're working face or heel you can just be in the family is that what i'm understanding well, well it was the do you red velvet you re- never a heel sure. so, mm, never she was she uh, was working heel on wednesday yeah. no uh, so, no that was Britt baker people just cheered Britt baker so so nah, you go you go back you go back and watch it shades of gray okay. dog okay okay let me let me fix this for you matt because um for those of you who are regular watchers of sammy govar's vlog like i am um this was Basically, they'd had this friend Olympics thing that they were having a tournament with Fuego Del Sol and Baron Black and Kylan King and uh, Ten from Dark Right, and they were to see who would get the jacket. And then, if you don't know, if you were paying attention, um, they Fuego Del Sol actually ended up being on camera wearing his jacket, right? And so Cody had to basically shoot a rush wrap up to the to this thing that had been building for weeks, and he just let all the people in the tournament win, except for uh, uh, ten. What's his real name? Uh, yeah, he, he's advance. like pressed advance. So he's he got the big X. Everyone else won, even though they had been competing against one another. So, and he, he was very sort of forthcoming as we're yeah we know we're rushing this but uh we don't give a shit they all get a jacket that's kind of how he that's kind of how it did it so it was pretty cool because if you saw um you know fuego got got the got his head kicked off by uh, malachi black kind of and uh and then and then beaten up by uh, andrade alito right and then and but but the thing is though if you've if you've watched you're talking about undercard people and developing stories for people like that dude. He's, he's won one match ever. He comes out and they chant fuego, 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 because yep. he's been the very master effective. of the tornado DDT. Right. He's effective on YouTube, right? He's built his character other ways. And instead of being like WWE where it says, Oh, Oh, you, you built this outside of our purview, Matt Cardona. You've done this on your own. Oh yeah, we got to kill that. They went no, no, no. Let's where ads go with it, right? Of course they went with it. So, yeah, 
Congratulations. Way to go, Fuego. I will say I really like the fact that Cody Rhodes put out there that uh, it doesn't matter. You, you don't, you're not necessarily uh, just working AEW. You can take that Nightmare Family logo jacket connection mm-hmm. and take it to any company in the world. Well, no matter what, just means you're associated with the brand that currently leads that roster to uh, Cody, Brandy, Dustin Rhodes, Arn Anderson, Brock Anderson, Lee Johnson, the Gun Club, and also uh, some associated with the groups are Diamond Dallas Page, Glacier, Tommy Dreamer, and Stephen Amell. Right. A lot, um, a lot of um, prospects yeah. in, that, in that list. A lot. Right. I think probably, and it, and it might be the most accomplished would be Red Velvet out of that group. I mean, that that are currently active and not named Cody mm-hmm. Rhodes. Uh, let, let me be very clear. Let okay. me let me well, talk well, to you here. Let me tell you, I think Lee Johnson's stock is incredibly high, especially after his match with Miro. He's picked up a bunch of wins on Dark and Elevation. Mm-hmm. I think he's definitely uh, stepped up in ring, but I think he's a dude who you're gonna, you know, I think. I think in a while here we're going to be talking about Lee Johnson being a guy. Yeah, and I, mean, I, would, I, think, I think he's about thing. six six months. I think I well, think you're fine. And the same thing for Baron Black. Baron Black's a great talent too. I mean, if you've seen yeah. him on Dark I mean, Elevation, he's, he's been mm-hmm. uh, he's been he talk for the longest time now with him as well. Mm-hmm. I feel like we're noticing the people who have been with him for so long have gotten this kind of deal. I'm almost surprised Sean Dean is in Nightmare Family. Mm-hmm. Um, right. as someone who does all of the extra stuff well and kind of kind of is <laughs> sort i mean you got to watch the vlog man you see that you know, no i mean it, it feels like he is without being it yeah. you know well and if you and if you think about it i mean if you want to go back and really add in obviously not now storyline but qt marshall i mean that's how that's how we know who qt marshall was because even before AEW, he was beside Cody eating an apple all the time, you know. And that's how we got to know QT Marshall. And now, you know, he's branched out doing great things there. So, I mean, I, I it's, gosh, I don't know, man. I, I, I like it. I like what they're doing. They're using their, they're using YouTube. They're using the vlogs. They're using all of those things that WWE is underutilizing. Um, and I think that might be, that, that might be the thing that makes the difference because WWE has such a 1985 view on things where it's all about TV. It's all about the TV spot. It's all about advertisers that they have so underused it. And when you have talent that do like Xavier Woods, like Zelina Vega, like Adam Cole, what do you do? They, Instead of embracing it and using it to build the brand, they squash it and put their thumb down, which is, uh, you know, that's, that's going to be, when it's all said and done, that's what's going to be, they're going to look back this and go, this is where they lost it. New media. They didn't embrace it. And they clung to their old ways. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> uh, I got one more thing, and then it's time for the plug. We got to give you guys the current standings for New Japan Super Junior Tag League. Because uh, this has been happening now. I think this is night three or four at this point. I think just night three. Um, so the current standings are Taiji Shimori and El Fantasmo uh, with six points, Robbie Eagles and Tiger Mask with six points. El Desperado and uh, Yoshinobu Kanemaru at four points. Taguchi and Master Wado at one and two. Um, and effectively eliminated from winning this tournament, uh, Rapungi 3K, which is maybe the most shocking, yeah. and Gato and Dick to go, which is not shocking. Um, I'll follow up with most of that. Um, the, the, the storytelling from Rapungi 3K um, is telling us we're either leading to um, another singles run or we're looking for a split. Um, they're not on the same page. They're not picking up wins. Um, you know, we already had um, a singles run um, 
be uh, before we came back together. So um, I really like that. Um, the oldest tag team, of course, you're not going to get any wins. I would be surprised if they come out with any wins. They have Show and Yo, which um, it actually wouldn't surprise me if they pulled that off if they were looking to do the turn. Um, and then the other one is going to be Taguchi and Matt's favorite, Master Watto. Um, the man, the man, no gimmick. Um, Watto, Watto, Watto. He's a master. But guys, it. <laughs> um, I really think this is Ishimura and El Fantasma's tournament to lose at this point. Um, and they it, will. It, it, uh, you want to know who's winning this? Go ahead. It's Taguchi and Master Wano. <laughs> Stop it. It is, because think about it. Think about it. Ishinori and El Fantasmo have no reason to win. They're already top guys there. Robbie Eagles and Tiger Mask, you're not going to do anything with Tiger Mask at this point. Uh, Desperado and Kanemaru have had a decent run here. Now is the time to build some new teams. And you put Master Wado on the map by pinning no. Ishimori to win the tag. I, he... um, I wouldn't be opposed to that. I'm not a fan of Master Wado. Um, but I would also not be opposed to them being in a kind of winner-take-all scenario coming into the final night of this, which will be on the 17th. Um, who does Tiger Mask and Ishimori have? Or Tiger, Tiger Mask and Eagles have? But they have Ishimori, El Phantasmo. Um, uh, that's on the 16th. So um, I don't see I don't see how Taguchi and Master Wado can win. They're going to. No, I'm saying <laughs> with with only two matches left. They haven't have been the effectively two... eliminated yet. That's the important thing. I know, thing. but just doing simple math, I feel like we're kind of just overlooking it for the time being because they have a win. Um, but either way, it's been a pretty decent uh, tournament, to say the least. Um, obviously, we haven't had one of these in two years. Um, I look back two years ago, and it was a little more loaded a little bit more versatile. Um, that kind of some, well, that was when Shonyo won it for the second year in a row. Um, but if you're looking to establish a new team, Matt, you're right. Um, I may, maybe my math is wrong. Even if they win their last two, they only put them at six. And yeah. with the top two teams having six, one team is going to get a win and get two two points. So I'll put them at eight. Yeah. So yeah, I was just pulling this up because I was talking. I was just to see. Yeah. Cause yeah. Because they, after three, so there's only what? There's only two matches left, right? Yep. Yeah. Two matches. So each. Two two matches left. So the best they can do is if they win their next two is eight because they're at mm -hmm. two points now. One wins, two losses. So that's the, the best, best they can do. So best they can uh, do you is have. Six. No, the best thing you do is eight because you get three for a win. So if they win both, that'll be six. Two. I think it's just two points for a win. Yeah, you no, no, you're right. I'm looking at one. You're right, two points. So the best they can do is six. Yeah. Bullet Club, uh, Ishimori, Fantasmo, six. Eagles, Tiger Mask, six. El Desperado, Kanemura at four. So yep. right now. So um, I, I'm going to be with Ryan on this, but um, I, I don't think you can count out um, Kanemura and El Desperado either. I don't think you can. No, and Here's I was just thing. gonna follow up. That's 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 gonna be your uh, winner take all there because you're gonna get Desperado and Kanamaru beat Sho and Yo the night before, putting them at six points. Um, and then you can still have Ishimori and El Fantasmo go over, putting them at eight. And then on the last night, you're gonna have Desperado and Kanemaru, if they win, they're going to win the whole thing. I think that's a little bit more of an exciting finish. So here's my thing with this whole shebang. I don't think you have Sho and Yo and Gato and Dick to go 
uh, scoreless. I don't think they don't win a single match this whole tournament. Well, they do face each other on the last night. So one of them is definitely going to win. I won't be surprised. Yeah. Who faces Sho and Yo on Tuesday? Or uh, That would be El Desperado and Yoshinobu Kanemaru. Yeah, I won't be surprised if they win that. Uh, think about this. Wado and, uh, Wado and Taguchi have Gato and Dick together. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, I'm trying to look so, here to see. So, right, right, wait a minute. So you understand what's happening right now, Ryan. Matt is booking this so that he'll be right. That's so, that's the only. That's all. He's doing. <laughs> Listen, if I'm actually just looking at the rest over. of the matches at this point. Yeah. Um, and here, here's where this uh, this gets a little oh. iffy for me here. Um, Master Wado and Taguchi have lost to Ishimori and El Fantasma. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it throws a little slight slight wrench in my plan here. Just. Yeah. Slight, yeah. Just, just a minute. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm starting to get some vibes from you, if you know what I'm feeling. I'm, I'm going to let you finish. I'm going to let you finish. I'm just you realizing know. that Ishimori and Fantazzo face Eagles and Tiger Mask on the last night. Right. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. Yeah, like all of that scrapped. Get it out of okay, All go. right. Well, whoever wins that match wins the whole thing. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Whew. I'm so glad you didn't just like hold on to being wrong forever. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I didn't, I didn't. I forgot what matches have already happened. So when I saw that we still have uh, Ishimori and Phantasma versus Eagles and Tiger Mask. Yeah. Like, oh, oh. All right. Well then. Okay. Now I'm trying to think if there's any way we get a. Uh... Do you just win by having the most points, or do you take the top two again to take a match here? I don't remember. It's been a couple years. Well, I feel like it's different because I feel like in the past we had the two different brackets. Yeah, with less teams this year, I don't know. Yeah, so I, I'm gonna have to do some research here and tell y'all research. Um, but that will have to be for another show because we have about hit our hour. So, mm. Todd, I'm gonna need you to hit him with the plug here. Yeah. Um. So just to follow up on your son, Ross Sapp, breaking news from earlier, and I'm going to kill it now. Um, it's Baron Corbin versus Drew McIntyre on Raw. Um, Baron Corbin is a SmackDown competitor. Um, hold that thought. Um, guys, uh, if you are watching this, even if you're listening to it, um, you're expecting more results from over the weekend or the end of last week. Um, you can actually now check us out on YouTube, which you've always had the ability to do. But starting this week, we have taken brand assignments. That is right. You can check out the assignments on all of our social medias right after this video posts. I'm going to make sure it's nice and clean. Um, the show review will be up um, about, well, no longer than 12 hours after the show finishes. So it should be really nice, really quick, really tight. A nice area to get all of your wrestling um results and some varying opinions um on top of that um guys like share and subscribe okay make sure you hit that notification bell make sure you got notifications turned on that way when one of us posts a video it's going to pop up you're going to know um nextgentn.net for tickets to uncivil war six That'll be at the end of August. It is the last Sunday in August. So plan for that. Uh, $25 gets you in at four. $20 gets you in at regular time. Um, Also, speaking of Next Generation Wrestling Tennessee, we are sitting down for a little chatty chat with the guys tomorrow. Cody and Eddie, we're going to have an unscripted kind of sit down and chat about – feeling the vibes coming off of the party bowl because this is the first time we're talking to him since the party bowl um so kind of very 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 quickly get into that and it's all on civil war six which i know we're all excited for a stacked card um if you haven't seen it go to our facebook page everything is up there um and then that video will be up on wednesday um 
And then next Monday, I know we're throwing a lot at you. Go to our socials. You'll get it all. All you got to do is like, share, subscribe. Um, next Monday, we will be joined by none other than the tantalizing one himself. That is tantalizing Tony. Um, the last time we tried to have him on, um, we got hit by a supercell here in uh, the state of Virginia where we are at. So that was unable to happen due to weather. So we're getting him back now. We're hitting the home stretch to SummerSlam, which he will be at. Um, so this will be a great chance for us to all vibe together and just shoot the breeze here on the WrestleCast. Um, and if you want us to get more guests like that on the show and you want us to make even more content than you're going to get hit with in the next week and for the foreseeable future, guys, go to PWO, okay? Go to Kofi.com. So that's PWO123. It's as easy as 123. For just the price of a cup of coffee a day, you can continue to support us. And we're always doing it for Pat. We're doing it for Pat. Hey, I want to throw something out here, too. I know we've already done the plugs, but since I'm in charge of other in the moving forward, right? We have AEW, we have WWE, and then I get in charge with other since that's what I watch. Don't forget, August 14th coming up. What do we got? You guys almost didn't even want to mention it. Baby, we no, because we're gonna have a review show for it of Triple Mania Resurgence. No, we're talking about Triple Mania, All of it, baby. baby. <laughs> Triple yeah. Mania. So, Triple Mania, don't forget, we got that coming up. So, uh, including Marvel's Lucha Libre exhibition. If you've seen some of Marvel's Lucha Libre, mm. they're gonna have some of that going on to be announced. Uh, some AEW stars, including Andrade El Idolo versus Kenny Omega. For the uh, AAA mega title match. Is he going to lose one of those belts from the belt collection? Eh, we don't know. Uh, don't forget Impact Knockouts champion Diana Perazzo are going to go against uh, AAA Reina de Reinas champion Fabi Apache. So that's going to be going to be able to watch that. Ooh, and so much more. Don't forget oh, uh, the Lucha Bros are going to be back there defending their AAA world titles. So, yeah, I think we know who's winning that. I think we do too. Well, guys, it's about that time, especially because I think my, my laptop's about to die. So I think it's about that time we call it a night here on this Monday. Everyone say uh, our thoughts and prayers for Drew. Um, nothing bad's really happening. He just has to cover Monday Night Raw. So <laughs> uh, hold on. It was his choice. And he actually chose Raw over SmackDown. Hey, man, so look, when we look. when yeah, when fine. people come back. Watch what you want to watch, but the, but there are some questionable decisions. Uh, I hope that it's a great show for him, and I will I catch too. up later this week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so with that, we'll see you all right, every day this week on the YouTube. Yeah. We'll be back here next Monday. We're also going to have that interview. I highly recommend you look at that because, God, Next Gen Wrestling is so good. I can't wait to get back there. Can't wait. With that, guys, goodbye. Good night. A bang. Or relax. Stay tantalizing. <laughs>